friends, my name is Mei Lin and welcome back to my channel. I'm a flutist performer and music teacher located in the city of Kamloops, British Columbia and this is my channel where we learn all things flute so thank you so much for joining me here today. In today's video we're going to be doing another Christmas classic and this one is called Oh Come, Oh Come Emmanuel so if you're interested then just keep on watching. As always if you have any questions about the video please feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. I do my best to answer them as soon as I see them. Also if you have any issues when it comes to practicing feel free to check out my free practice guide also located in the description down below. It gives you eight really easy steps to follow to help guide your practice sessions. All right, so let's just get right into today's video. So as I previously mentioned, we're going to be reading O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. I'm taking this music from a score on 8notes.com again. This is not sponsored. The score is free, so I will be transcribing the first flute part down an octave for it to be easier for beginners. However, if you do want to read the original score, there is a link at the bottom in my description for you to access the free music. All right, so I'm going to put up a copy of my transcription right over here. So we're going to go through our first six starter bits before we get into clapping and counting and then playing the piece. So let's start with number one, and number one is our key signature. So we're going to take a look in between our treble clef and our time signature to see if you have any accidentals. So we do have two accidentals here, so we have B flat and E flat. So that means that we can either be in B flat major or it's relative minor G minor. So let's take a look to see if we can figure out if it's in the major key or it's relative minor. So we're going to look at the first note and the last note here to see if we have any indication of the tonic of either of those keys. So we start on a G and then we end on a G. So there's a high indication that we are playing in the minor key. We're going to also take a look to see if you can find the raised seventh anywhere. So the raised seventh of the minor keys, you're going to go down one semitone from the letter name. So we know that G is the tonic. So we're going to go down one semitone. So if you're to look down on your keyboard, you go down one key and that would be F sharp. So we're going to take a look to see if you can find any F sharps to the piece. So in the first flute part, we don't see any F sharps very interestingly. If you're looking at the square, you will find a few uh, F sharps, especially in the third part there. However, it's not super clear that it is in the minor key. So this is actually an interesting piece because it's more in a mode. I can't remember which mode this is in. I'd have to look it up again. But essentially we're playing in a minor mode here. So it's not super clear because you don't have a ton of the accentals there, but we are playing in, relatively speaking, G minor. Number two, we're gonna be looking at our time signature. So we're gonna see uh, we have four over four, so that's common time, so that means the top number tells us how many beats we have per measure, so we have four beats per measure, and the bottom number tells us what note type those beats are, so the four represents a quarter note, so that means we have four quarter notes per measure. Number three, you're going to be looking at our tempo indications. We don't have anything written up on top of the piece here, so I'm going to go off of some recordings that I listened to, and I came up to the conclusion that a good performance tempo would be a quarter equals 90 beats per minute. So when I clap and count and play it on the flute, I will be playing it at that specific speed. If you want to change the speed, if you want to increase it or if you want to decrease it, slow it down, you can always go back into the playback settings and change that by either increasing the playback speed or decreasing it. Number four, we're going to be looking at our dynamics. So we're going to see if you have any dynamics written here. We don't have anything written throughout the piece at all, so I would recommend playing this at a mezzo forte to forte dynamic, so moderately loud to loud, but of course I would highly recommend uh, writing in your own dynamics so you can experiment and see what you like the best. Number five, we're going to be looking at our articulation. So we're going to see if we have any slurs, staccatos, or mercados written above the notes that tells us how we should be playing those notes. So we do have a few slurs here and there, mostly the first three beats of every bar. I'm looking at bar number three, for example, that comes up at uh, bar six. So just make sure that you take notice of where those slurs are. They do tend to have a pattern here. So if you want, you can always print out the music and highlight it or color it in or even circle it with a pencil just to make sure that you know that you're playing the correct articulations when they're there. How to play a slur just in case you forgot. You're just going to be tonguing the first note of that slur and then you're just going to play through with one single breath the rest of the notes underneath the slur. Number six we're going to be looking at our roadmap and then we're going to see if we have any interesting decapos or repeats and at a quick glance we don't have anything so we're just going to be reading it from top to bottom. 
I am going to make a little note here that we do have some time changes here. So at the very end, I'm looking at uh, the third bar to the end or a fourth bar, depending on how I transcribe this. We do have a two four bar. So just make sure that you are counting that correctly. Again, feel free to circle that in if you feel like that might come up unexpectedly. So in that bar, we only have two quarter notes rather than four. And also note that we are starting on a pickup bar, so if you're looking at the score, you're only going to see beat 4, but when I transcribe it, I will transcribe those three beats in front of the pickup bar just so it's easier to read. Alright, so let's get into clapping and counting the piece. So again, a quarter note is going to equal 90. 1, 2, 3. 4, 1, 2, 3. 4, 1, 2, 3. 4, 1, 2, 3. 4, 1, 2, 3. Very good. So just make sure that I did emphasize there when we had that time signature change. So the beat doesn't change, just how many beats in that measure changes. All right. So again, if you're not sure about any of the notes here, make sure that you write them in with your pencil, the letter names. And if you're not sure about any of the fingerings, I do have a fingering chart listed down below in the description of every single one of my videos so that you have easy access to making sure that you have the first of all the right notes and then you are also playing it with the correct fingering. All right, so now we're going to play it with the flute again. A quarter note equals 90. One, two. and warm and comforting and again making sure that you practice this at a tempo where you feel comfortable with it and you're not making a lot of mistakes and then slowly increasing it until you get it at the tempo where you're most comfortable. Alright, so that's going to be it for today's video. Make sure that you do stick to the end for the four-part accompaniment if you're interested in playing along with me. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section. And if you have any issues when it comes to practicing, check out my free practice guide also located in the description. So I'm going to say thank you so much for joining me here. And if you did like the video, please be sure to like it and click the subscribe button for more videos just like this. Happy holidays! And as always, happy learning!